Hello and welcome to the first ever Ecolution Live podcast. I'm James Dunn and I'm here because climate action has become my mission over the past year. We're recording during the week of RTE on climate. It's a very busy week with loads of exciting stuff all about climate change. As well as this podcast and many other exciting programmes, this Friday is the first ever Youth Assembly on Climate in Dáil Éireann. I'm lucky enough to be one of only 157 delegates and I cannot wait. Well, one of the people in a key position to really hear what we have to say is my guest today. He has worked as part of many of our governments and as a TD he has played part in forming how our country responds to changes in the world with work and education. His latest challenge is one that faces us all. Please welcome the Minister for Communications, Climate Action and Environment, Mr. Richard Bruton. Now, Minister, um, very nice to meet you. How do you hope, uh, sorry, what do you hope to do as Minister for Communications, Climate Action and Environment? Well, we have set out uh, in June of this year, we've published an ambitious climate plan, which will get us right back on track, uh, close the gap uh, to the targets that have been set for us. Uh, now, the sort of things we're doing, we're going to have five times as much renewable energy on the grid. So our power will be coming from clean wind and uh, solar and sources like that. We're going to have 10 times as much as retrofitting of our homes. So we will be insulating, changing our heating systems. We will have 25 times as many people opting for electric vehicles instead of diesel or our petrol. Uh, we will have 250 million trees planted over the next 10 years. So it's big, big change. So it's asking people to change the habits of a lifetime in many ways. It's also asking people to accept infrastructures that haven't been seen in the country before, wind farms, solar farms, you know, more strengthening of our grid so we can have clean energy. Uh, and of course, it means people changing the way they spend their money, changing their priorities in many ways, changing what they, the daily choices that they make in their lives. So while we can lead at government level, it really hinges us on individual communities responding and taking the opportunities we, we can offer. Okay, so uh, one of the things the government has done is to declare a climate emergency bill. So what does that mean now that the, gov the government has declared that bill? Well, it means that it is top priority in everything we do. So you'll see recently, just last month, we had a budget. So in the budget, we have introduced uh, what people call climate pricing or uh, carbon pricing. So we're putting a price on the damage that people do by emitting carbon. That price will increase every year for the next 10 years. And every cent of that money that we are raising, we're going to plough back into supporting and empowering communities to make changes. Uh, so you know, that's a really tangible evidence of what we're doing but we so next year we will double the number of electric chargers on the road we will double the amount of money spent for low-income families to upgrade their homes uh, we have banned single-use plastics and uh, we uh, will be introducing charges on you know the the non the the non-reusable cups that people use 600 million cups coffee cups or tea cups are used and thrown away in ireland every year you know so we're going to introduce taxes on that so everything will be seen through the prism of you know how does this impact on our the global emissions of our activities uh, and each year we will uh, intensify our plan, uh, change the measures, improve the measures so that we hit the targets we've set for ourselves. You spoke there about your um, policy on single-use plastics um, and you said about the latte levy, uh, which is what some people are calling it. Um, I heard that that is due to start in 2021. Um, I'm curious as to why that can't start immediately. No, that will start much earlier than that, but we, we are, have a consultation underway at the moment uh, and then we will move to introduce legislation. The exact timing depends on getting through the Dáil, uh, but I think there will be support in, in the Dáil and the, the Shannad to bring forward legislation. But there can be a time from you know settling the exact policy and then getting the legislative framework to bring it through the Dáil. That can cause delay, but I think you know our direction of travel is very clear here. 
uh, and we want to see it to change people's behaviour and promote a uh, different attitude uh, because you know we have a very ambitious plan on plastics we want to eliminate all non-recyclable plastics in, in in ireland at the moment two-thirds of the plastics that we use cannot be recycled uh, so we have a huge problem with plastic ending up either in landfill or incineration where we could have recyclable plastic that could be reused Okay, so as part of that, um, a lot there's a lot of large corporations using plastics and all that. There's, there's a lot of controversy over that. So, what is the government going to do to tackle these large corporate large corporations that are known to be contributing to this climate crisis? Well, every company, whether big, big, small, large enterprise, farm, are going to have to address their carbon impact. Uh, now, a lot of the largest companies, like for example. Electricity companies are very large, but they're providing power for all the rest of us. So while they're doing a lot of the work, they depend on the choices we make as well. The same with, you know, you could say large oil companies are delivering oil, the diesel and petrol we use in our cars. But it's only if we make the switch to electric that we actually change things. So everyone, it's not just companies. We can't pretend that, you know, there's large companies out there. If they'd sort it out, we'd all be fine. The reality is it's the choices we make each day that you know, mean that oil companies are dominating the field, not, you know, low emission activities. Uh, so we've to shift that uh, and it's to shift for all of us as well as uh, we need to obviously impose uh, responsibilities on large companies. So take an example uh, from now on, every building that's built by builders and developers has to be a near zero energy building. That's now a regulation, that's an obligation on those companies uh, and they have to deliver uh, buildings that don't have a, a big carbon footprint. It's close to nil carbon footprint is a requirement now. Okay, um, you spoke there about people changing stuff in their everyday lives. What are the government going to do to make um, a more economically sustainable um, and more environmentally sustainable lifestyle, more incent uh, like incentivize it for people, because it's it's at the moment it's not as um, economically viable to choose an environmentally friendly lifestyle rather than one that isn't. Yeah, I mean there will be incentives. Some of the incentives will be penalties, like we were just talking about penalties on using uh, you know single use activities some of them will be banned so we we are going to ban single-use plastics it's already banned in the public service we're going to ban a list of single-use plastics throughout the economy so some things will be uh, absolute bans so you or i big companies small companies they won't be able to use some of these things they won't be able to do things but we will also you know provide subsidies today we provide a ten thousand euro subsidy uh, to people who buy an electric vehicle as opposed to uh, a diesel vehicle. Uh, we provide a, a grant for putting an electric charger in your home. We provide 100% grants to low-income families to upgrade the heating systems and the insulation in their homes. For other families, we provide 30% grant for those sort of changes. Uh, so we have a big range of measures. We do similar support to farmers, uh, say dairy farmers who want to improve their energy system. There are some supports for them. If people want to use biomass to replace fossil fuel in heating, we provide grants for that. So there's a whole range of grants largely run by Sustainable Energy Ireland, which are designed to help people on that journey. And we have 300 sustainable energy communities. These are communities who come together to look at their the buildings and activities in their community and say, how can we improve it? We pay them 25,000 to design a plan uh, as to how they can reduce their, their carbon impact in their community. And then we uh, provide the grants as appropriate to the, the, the type of activity they're going to undertake. So there's a lot there to be done. Uh, and we've committed that every cent coming from the carbon price, and that will raise six and a half billion over the next uh, 10 years, every cent of that will go back into supporting either just transition, low-income families who are struggling, uh, or all the rest of us trying to make the changes in our lives. Okay, that, um, I suppose, how do you see Ireland in 20 years' time with this apparent climate crisis affecting us? Well, I think in 20 years' time, we will be still in the midst of this adjustment, but we will be recognising that this change is bringing cleaner air, warmer homes, a healthier relationship to our own environment, and making sure that 
we are not contributing to damage the globe in the way that we have been in recent years. So we will be well on our way in 20 years' time to the net zero uh, ambition that Europe has set for itself. Uh, but there will still be difficult issues. It will be hard in certain sectors. We saw this week how you know, Bordnamona workers who have been extracting peat in the bogs to, to power uh, electricity generation, that can no longer happen. And we have to support them in making those changes. There will be other similar changes that will be difficult for people immediately impacted and we have to make sure that there are other job opportunities for people uh, and that, that will be true of a lot of sectors that have become too carbon intensive in the way they have developed their business. Okay, so um, the UN has outlined that we have now 11 years left to reduce our emissions before the planet um, warms to such a degree that um, it's very harmful. So if we're still adjusting to this in 20 years' time, uh, clearly the effects will probably be quite substantial. Yeah, we need to, need to make radical changes over the next, you know, between now and 2050. Uh, Europe has set a target. We are going to go from where we are now, in, and in Ireland's case, we are, what, 70 80% dependent on fossil fuels today for our energy to get to a, 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 a net zero situation. That's big change. Uh, obviously, we will continue to do that. And you'll see new technologies coming in, like carbon capture, so that you don't actually, you uh, don't emit the carbon that you might be using in certain activities. That doesn't escape into the atmosphere. So you'll see a lot of new technologies helping us to, to make these changes. But we hope also that nature starts to fix the problem itself. Nature, given the chance, has the capacity to, as they describe it, sequester carbon, to take carbon back out of the atmosphere. If we develop our forestry, you know, rewild areas in our country, we can create a better um, biodiversity, but also start to suck in carbon and help us on this journey. So it's not, you can't click your fingers and, and solve this overnight, uh, but we are absolutely determined uh, that Europe will be a leader in this and that we will continue to put pressure on the other countries to join in the UN commitments uh, that have set out in the Paris Agreement. Some countries, unfortunately, still haven't joined that. Okay, so... Um what, what's next on the agenda? How quickly are Ireland going to respond to the climate crisis? Well, we've, we are going to hit our target in 2030. Uh, sadly, we didn't hit our target at all in 2020. We will have widely missed the 2020 target. Uh, but we now have the measures in place which we're implementing day by day that will hit those targets. The next big thing, I suppose, that we will be announcing will be the auction for uh, renewable uh, for renewable energy to go onto our grid. We'll be announcing that before the end of the year. Another significant uh, announcement we hope to make is sign a broadband contract, uh, and that will allow people to work from home instead of all the commuting that goes with, uh, with uh, traditional commuting patterns and work patterns. So we're doing things every week. We're looking at things that can be done to, to build our momentum here, and we're determined we will deliver this. There's targets for every sector, uh, every minister is committed to this and it's a factor in all our decision making now. Okay, so um, in terms of commuting, the public transport system in Ireland is pretty dated. So um, for the climate action, would you be looking to change that? Yeah, we've committed to 8 billion investment in, in public transport uh, as we speak. Bus Connects is, is uh, the final design for Bus Connects for here in Dublin, has been published by, by the National Transport Authority. That will be controversial because it gives far greater priority to buses than cars. So cars will be squeezed off the road and more space will be made for people to use bikes, bikes or in segregated lanes or buses on these lanes. So you know, that's a 2 billion investment, for example. You know, obviously, it's in its final consultation. Some people won't be happy with it, uh, but that is designed to make our city more sustainable, more livable. And then in the rural areas, of course, we would have to look where people can't give up the car. We have to look at electrifying that, switching from diesel to electric vehicles. So we have a range of measures to change the, the shape of transport so it doesn't be so reliant on fossil fuels and the carbon emissions that they bring. Okay, and you spoke about bus connects. The buses themselves currently are mostly powered by diesel or fossil fuels. 
Will you be doing anything to change that? Yeah, they're moving progressively to hybrids and then from that, there on to, to, uh, to low emission. Unfortunately, bigger vehicles can't just switch to electric because the batteries would be too big for heavier goods vehicles. So the transition out of fossil fuels is slower for these heavier vehicles. Uh, and we will see you know, compressed natural gas or even uh, hydrogen uh, powered vehicles coming into the network over time. Uh, so we have to make those choices as the technologies become available and we can do them uh, most effectively. Uh, but cars, like in, in 2024, it will be a no-brainer to switch away from diesel and petrol to electric because it will be cheaper to run uh, and they will be a, a more competitively priced by then. So it will, you know, technology is helping us here. The, 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 the evolving capacity of industry to deliver cleaner fuels uh, that, that uh, don't have carbon impact is a big part of why we're opting for electrification. Okay. Um, in terms of uh, carbon emissions, it, it's a lot more... Uh, Sorry, it's a lot less carbon emissions to buy Irish produced goods. Will the be, will the government be doing anything to encourage people to buy Irish products rather than products that are imported? Well, government is restricted in, if you like, having buy Irish campaigns because we're part of a European Union where there's free tr free trade between us. Uh, and obviously, we're a small trading company. We depend on being able to sell back and forward. So what we would be encouraging consumers is to think about the choices they make, think about lower carbon options, think about using local uh, produce. But government's capacity to, if you like, impose regulations is restricted by our membership of the European Union. Uh, but people should be thinking about buying local. Uh, they should also be looking at their diet. Some elements of their diet are lower in their carbon impact than others. They should be thinking particularly about food waste. We waste, uh, they say, the estimate is that each home wastes uh, nearly a ton of, of, of food per year, a uh, very substantial amount of money. And even uh, some of that doesn't go into the brown bin. Some, a lot of food is getting either into the black bin where it has to go to landfill or incineration and we lose the chance of reusing that or even goes into the green bin where it contaminates uh, materials that are fit for recycling. So we need to think through the choices we make about food and the way we dispose of it, uh, you know, and not have wasteful food thrown out of your fridge each, each, each week because it wasn't used. It, all of that sort of thing can make a huge impact. Okay, and as part of this podcast, we visited the Dublin Waste to Energy plant in Poolbeg. It's an incinerator that burns our waste and transitions it into energy in a fairly sustainable way. Um, and there's only currently two of those plants in Ireland. Would you be looking at getting more of those? Because currently we're exporting a lot of our waste to be dealt with in other countries. Yeah, we don't we don't export uh, black bin waste. That 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 either goes to landfill or incineration. Uh, we have committed that we will bring our landfill down to just 10%. So there's 26% now, we have to bring it down to 10%. Uh, so we will be commi committing to reduce our waste as the first priority. So we hope householders will be generating less waste. We want to see more going into the green bin and the brown bin. A lot of material that now goes to either incineration or to uh, landfill shouldn't be in that black bin at all. So there's a lot of things we can do uh, before we have to talk about new incineration capacity. But it is important that we also build out recycling capacity in Ireland because the vast majority of the materials we have for recycling go for export. There is a capacity to build uh, capacity in Ireland to do the recycling to make sure that you're not, you know, we can recycle plastics into new uses uh, and you know, all of those sectors are, are opportunities as part of uh, a decarbonised economy. OK, um, just recently Ireland has ranked worst for climate action in the EU. How does that make you feel as Minister for Climate Action? Very disappointed. I mean, that is the that is the challenge that I have been confronted with. I suppose, to be fair to Ireland, we've spent the last number of years recovering from the deepest economic crisis that we've ever had. During that crash, we looked to be compliant on everything. 
Uh, it's only as the economy has started to recover, we, we've discovered that we have not succeeded in breaking the connection between prosperity and carbon. So we have to make big structural changes in our economy now. And that's what this plan is about, making those big structural changes. OK, are you hopeful? I'm very hopeful. I mean, I think, you know, one of the interesting things from history, it's, it's really when societies have faced big threats to their future that the, the greatest strides are made, the greatest strides in collaboration, the greatest strides in creativity. And this is just such a challenge to us all. We have to show the creativity, but also the, the capacity to work together. Uh, because, you know, the worst thing that could happen about confronting the climate challenge is if we started to split, if one group started pointing the finger at others and say, I shouldn't be asked to do anything. It should be farmers or it should be oil companies or okay. it should be someone else. We all are in this. And we have to work creatively together to fix it. Perfect. Um, now we're going to have some questions from our, the members of our audience uh, from School Katrina in Bagot Street. Hi, my name is Sula and I'm from School Katrina 4th class. What can we do in the classroom to be more mindful of climate control? Well, I'm sure you're, you're a member of the Green Schools Initiative and they look at all of the different things, how you handle your waste, how you handle your water, uh, you know, the sort of choices you make, whether you have plastics in the school, you know, single-use plastics shouldn't be there, we shouldn't be, uh, we should try and um, switch off our lights in the classroom uh, when we're not there. There's so many things that you can do. Uh, even, say, the mobile phone in your pocket, many people have them in their pocket, it's estimated that a ton, uh, it, it, a mobile phone uses a ton uh, of carbon in the year. Uh, so if we're doing an awful lot of downloading and stuff, we're actually add, adding to the problem because data centres are big carbon users. So. Everything we do, from what we eat, how we dispose of waste, uh, you know, the, the way we get to school in the first place, whether we use a car or walk or cycle, all of those things can have a huge impact. Yeah. Hi, my name is Maya. I'm from school, Katrina, fourth class. Can, can climate change be reverse, reversed or is it too late? Oh, Absolutely, it can be, but the damage that has been... The trouble with carbon is it builds up in the atmosphere and doesn't dissipate. So what we're doing is slowing down the amount we put into the atmosphere. And I think that's why the science has set this, the need to become very aggressive over the coming years, because as that, if you like, carbon builds up over time, we're, we are imposing this capacity for the, the globe to heat. So it's really important that we address it now. Uh, but we can reverse this, and it is, it is possible to deal with these. But we also will have to learn to adapt to some changes. You know, sea levels have risen, so we're going to have to look at flooding in our communities. Uh, we will have, you know, hotter summers and colder winters, so we have to look at how we, you know, insulate our homes. So we need to do things to make ourselves more resilient in the face of the impact of what has happened in the past, as well as changing uh, greenhouse gases for the future. Um, my name is Mia, I'm from Skull Katrina 4th class, and I would like to know um, how does Ireland compare to other countries when it comes to tackling climate control? Well, I don't think we compare well in the progress we've made in the last, uh, say, seven years. We haven't done well. Many other countries are struggling. Uh, we are a developed country, so we've higher carbon emissions. Uh, we also have a very large agricultural sector and very few uh, countries have been able to bring down the carbon impact of their agricultural sector rapidly. There aren't as many technologies there. So we have difficulties, uh, but I think we are determined to be part of the net zero project in Europe. We have signed up to those ambitions and we now have a plan in place that will see us hit the targets we set for ourselves and that we've agreed to internationally as part of the Paris Agreement. So, uh, yes, we, we've, we've to pull up our socks, but we now have a plan that I think can deliver the change. Hi, my name is Alex and I'm from School Katrina Fourth Class. And what is a carbon footprint and how does it affect climate change? 
Well, that's a, I, I'm not a scientist, but basically what happens is that if you, um, if you generate carbon dioxide or methane, they're the two big gases. Uh, methane largely comes from cattle. It's, you know, as a result of the way they, they chew grass and so on, they, they create methane. And carbon dioxide comes largely from burning fossil fuels, burning coal, burning peat, burning oil, burning gas. And what they do is they build up in the atmosphere and like a greenhouse, a glass house, they create a sort of a, a, a cover over the, over the earth. So when the sun is shining in, that heat gets trapped like it would get trapped in a glass house. And that's why it's called greenhouse gases. They create a sort of a, 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 an umbrella over the country, over the globe that's trapping the heat in. So we need to start to, re, to, to prevent uh, the amount of that glass building up that's covering uh, and dissipate that over time so that we don't see uh, the continuous uh, heating up of our, our, our globe. Uh, and that takes every country working together uh, so it takes us taking our challenge seriously, but also all the other countries of the, of the world, because you know, it doesn't respect boundaries. We can't say we'll have fixed our peace and Ireland will be OK, because it, it is, if you like, it affects the whole globe collectively, not individual countries. OK, thanks, Minister, for your time. Um, we hope to see some really positive changes in Ireland very soon. Thanks very much.